The following content is supported by Victorious.org. Hey guys, Chen Hao over here, and today let's solve this question where a tennis ball and a basketball fall down together. We want to find the height to which the tennis ball bounces to in terms of H and D in the diagram. We also apply the approximation that M1 is much greater than M2, and it is worth noting that this is a similar mechanism in which supernovas operate. Physics Girl did a video on it over here. Alright, so pause the video and attempt the question by yourself and we will go through the solution now. From the start, both balls will fall down with free fall acceleration g and when it hits the ground, there's going to be two collisions that occur. The first collision is going to be between the basketball and the ground and the second collision is going to be between the basketball and the tennis ball. The first collision is relatively simple. It simply flips the velocity of the basketball from a downward direction to an upward direction. The magnitude of the velocity, which is the speed, of the basketball stays the same because this collision is elastic. The second collision is where we need a bit of extra work to figure out how much momentum is transferred from the basketball to the tennis ball. Now, as for most collisions, we have a before and after diagram analyzing the collision. Now, before the collision, we know that the basketball is moving up with a velocity of v0 and the tennis ball is moving down with a velocity of v0. After the collision, we currently do not know the exact velocity of both the basketball and tennis ball and that is where we use v1 prime and v2 prime to denote the unknowns. Now because we have two unknowns, that implies that we need two equations and these two equations are going to be our conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. We can use these two principles because we know that the collision is elastic. From conservation of momentum, we can obtain the following equation, which can be factorized as such. We will see why we should factorize it this way soon enough. Now from the conservation of energy, we can obtain this expression, which can also be factorized as such. Now we see that there are some common terms in our equations 2 and 3, and that allows us to take equation 3 divided by equation 2, to obtain the following expression and express v1 prime in terms of v2 prime and this allows us to substitute this equation back into conservation of momentum equation in order to eliminate v1 prime from that expression. Effectively, we have simultaneously solved the com and coe equation. Now that substitution yields this equation which basically allows us to express v2 prime in terms of v0. We have solved for v2 prime. Now in the question, we take the limit in which m1 is much greater than m2 and this can be rewritten as the expression that m2 over m1 is much less than 1. We write the left hand side in terms of m2 over m1 and taking the limit in which m2 over m1 goes to 0, we obtain the following expression for v2 prime. Now going back to the diagram, we see that we have successfully found the results of the second collision in that we have found the velocity at which the second ball v2 prime would move upwards at. We know that the initial height of the ball is d, so all that remains is to do some simple kinematics to get the maximum height that the second tennis ball would reach. That concludes our solution and now let's discuss some insights which you can draw from this question. The first is the directions of the velocities which I've assigned in this before and after diagram. I've chosen the initial velocity of the M2 ball to be downward positive because to me it's more intuitive. If I had chosen the direction to be upwards positive, then I'll need to write that the upwards direction has the velocity of minus square root 2 gh, which in my opinion is not that intuitive. This, however, is up to your personal preference and it's best that you find the convention that you're comfortable with and stick to it. Another lesson we can learn from this question is the factorization which we performed here for the conservation of energy. This is a common technique to solve for collisions and it will be good practice to work out the general case for any elastic collision. In particular, I recommend looking at the Wikipedia article on elastic collisions and working through the calculations yourself. It is also worth exploring the center of mass frame which can be useful in other collision questions. Now that is all I have for the first part of this question and stay tuned for the second part of this question where we stack many more balls on top of one another which would lead us to some recurrence relation math but that is for another video.